Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can organize your workspace in PhotoLab 6 and give you some pro tips along the way so that you can be more productive with this software. And as I've said many times before, this is my personal photo editor of choice. And if you'd like to try and see if it's right for you, I'll have my affiliate links down below so you can download a free 30-day trial. So with that said, let's get started. All right, when you open up PhotoLab, it should open up to the last folder you are working on. If not, you can, of course, navigate to it via the folders panel. And I talked about how I import and organize my images in my last video, so you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, it's worked for me over the years. Uh, it may work for you as well. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and highlight a thumbnail and start editing right away with the Customize button. But I want to show you a couple of things you can do while you're in the thumbnail panel. Uh, you can pretty much ignore these icons up here. They're not useful until you actually start editing. But we do have a reset and apply preset. So if I highlight a thumbnail and I can go ahead and apply a preset right away to it. So if I'm going to make this black and white, for example, you'll see it updates the thumbnail. Or I can highlight a block of images and apply a preset like so and make all of these black and white. And then it'll gradually update the uh, thumbnails. And I don't generally like to do bulk editing like this. Uh, I'd rather work on the in images individually. But uh, I know some people, they do like to work in bulk sometimes uh, for certain types of uh, images. So let's go ahead and reset these. And I can reset them all at once, like so. And the other thing I can do here is, of course, we have the exit data here. We have the histogram. Uh, if I wanted to, I could just highlight all of these and assign a star rating or unassign a star rating. Uh, I can even edit the shot date. Or I can add keywords to all of these at once. So what I might do is just add, uh, like I know this is a Blue Jay. So I can just add do Blue Jay, hit enter, and now all of these images have the keyword Blue Jay assigned to them. And I might do the same thing here. Oh, uh, I've already already got it. So I can I can even take off a keyword in bulk like so by just clicking X on the keyword. But let me go ahead and put it back. Uh, it's in the drop down list now because I recently used it. And that's really about all you can do here in the thumbnail panel. Uh, you can adjust the size of the thumbnails by using this little slider here. Uh, you know, whatever is comfortable for you. So let's go ahead and open up an image. So I can show you how you can customize your editing workspace. And what you're seeing now is the default workspace that PhotoLab has set up for you. So a couple of tools have been expanded, but you can expand other tools if you want. So let's say we want to work on color a little bit. I can add a little saturation or collapse this, and then I can go down and start working on, uh, you know, make it black and white for the toning or the color wheel. And this, this is a little bit awkward, right? And, you know, sometimes I click on the wrong thing to, to collapse or uncollapse. So what DxO has done is they've created these tabs up here, and as you hover over them, you know, it groups together the tools for you. So if I want to work on just the things that are lighting, I can click on the lighting tab, and all the tools related to lighting expand out so you can start working with those. And then when I want to start working on color, I can click on the color tab, and all these tools are expanded. Then I can start working on the finer details like denoising and sharpness, etc. And this is how I worked with uh, PhotoLab for a long time, is I would switch back and forth between these tabs, make adjustments. Sometimes I'd have to go back the other way, make some more adjustments. So you can see even this can be a little bit cumbersome in your workflow. So what you can do from here is you can customize it even more by clicking on the little favorites uh, star right here. So in the lighting tab, you know, exposure comp, selective tone, and uh, contrast are like my favorite tools in this tab. Uh, and then I can go over to my color, and of course white balance and color accentuation are the two that I use here. 
I don't really do much in detail. I do this last always, so I don't check anything here. And under geometry, what I use the most is the uh, crop tool. Where is that? Right here. And then uh, these I do last as well. Uh, these are kind of more specialized tools, right? So now when I click on the light tab and I click on my favorite star here, the only tools that show under the lighting tab are the ones that I selected as my favorites. Same thing for color, only those two tools. So that cleans it up quite a bit. But I can do one more thing. I can uncheck the light tool. And now, since the favorites tool is still highlighted here, all of the tools under all of the tabs that I put a star next to are gonna show. And you can see this is a much, much shorter list. So I can do 90% of what I want to do to this image uh, much faster because I'm not clicking between tabs and I'm not scrolling up and down as much. Uh, so usually what I like to do is just go ahead and crop first. Like so. And then um, I might do some adjustments to the tones here, maybe a little bit of exposure comp. And... Uh, add a little bit of contrast and I'm like done with this image pretty much uh, the only other thing I might do here is add a little cr uh, correction like let me zoom in and just get rid of this this bar here with the healing tool and let's move this up here and there, I'm pretty much done. Um, now that I've got the image like 90% there, now I'm gonna click on my detail tab. Since I didn't have anything starred, I'm gonna uncheck the star button. And now I can apply my deep prime, my lens sharpness, and mess with it here like that. Uh, and then at this point, I'm actually ready to export this out to uh, Instagram. And now, let me just uncheck the Detail tab, click on my Favorites tab, and I can start working on the next image in the same kind of speedy way, right? Uh, I just have my favorite tools right here, and I can quickly edit these. But I want to show you how to customize this even further and save your customizations as well. So what we need to do is, let's uncheck the Favorites tab, and then go over here to Workspace, and click on Advanced. Now look at the right panel here. We can see all of the tools that we have, and they're grouped together into the specific categories that they're related to. Uh, just like the tabs here, right? So we have our light, our color, our detail. So now these tabs make a little more sense. You can see what tools are under each tab. And, you know, if I see a tool here that I didn't mark as a favorite, I can either go into it directly and work with it this way, or I can just go ahead and select it like so. Maybe I'll select this one too. And now I can check on the favorites button here. And you can see that the uh, soft proofing tool has been added and the unsharp mask tool has been added. Um, so it's just a, a way to further customize and add tools to your workflow so that you can work faster. Now there's more ways that you can customize this. And let me show you. If I right click on color, I can move it up. So now that it's first, or I can move light back up so that it's first. And you can move these up and down by right-clicking and selecting up or down. I, I don't really see a reason to change the order of this, but you can if you want to. You can also float uh, so that maybe if you have a dual monitor set up, you can move all your tools over to the other monitor and then just work with the image so you have more real estate. Uh, let me put it back in there. And then finally, you can dock it over to the left side, which I don't do very much. I like all my editing tools to be on the right, so I'm going to put it back. But there are some options there. Now, one thing that I like to do is I, I don't like the history tool too much here 
So I'm going to get rid of this because there's another way I like to work with the image history. And I'll show you what that is. But what I do like in this space over here is under palettes, I like to have my metadata showing. Because sometimes while I'm editing, I'll see things in the image that I didn't catch while I was in the field. So for example, you know, maybe I'll see a little bit of motion blur on the wings and I'll realize, you know, one three thousandth of a second ain't going to cut it. So the next time I go out, I'll use a faster shutter speed. Or maybe I did want motion blur in the wings and I'll realize that I'll need to use a slower shutter speed. Uh, so seeing the metadata while I'm editing helps me to analyze the image and help me improve my photography as well. Now, let me show you why I don't use the advanced history tab. So I'm going to do a quick edit to develop some history for this image. So as always, I like to crop and then uh, maybe give it a cloudy white balance and then uh, push the shadows a tiny bit. And, um, and then let me go into the detail tab and uncheck my favorites so I can apply the deep prime and lens sharpness. So let me zoom in here. So now what I can do is let me uncheck the detail tab. You can see a little blue tick box next to each item where I made a change. So only the tools that I used will have this little blue checkbox here and I can turn them on and off like so if I want, or if I click on the active corrections button here, it'll actually expand all of the boxes that I made changes and only those changes. So for example, of course, the ones that I use favorites on is all here, but you'll see that the denoising, I didn't check as favor, but it's still showing because I used it as well as the lens sharpness is not a favor, but it's showing as an active correction. So to me, this is a lot better than the active history, uh, advanced history toolbox, uh, because again, that, that gets convoluted with keystrokes and things that I may not care about. The only things I care about is where I made changes to the image. And I might say, you know, this looks a little too warm. So let me go back here and just change it to as shot. And that, that looks good to me as is. And now I'm ready to export this. Now, let me show you one last thing, because now that you've set up the workspace the way that you want it, uh, you, you can save it. So you just go into uh, Workspace and do Save Workspace and just call it whatever you want. Like I might call this one uh, Buy Me a Coffee, like so. And now anytime I come back in the photo lab, I can always pull up this workspace that I put all this work into. So for example, a workspace that I've set up previously, and I want you to look at the panel over here as I change my workspace. You can see that it's rearranged and I also have different favorite uh, items tagged here than I did before. And let me change it back to buy me a coffee. And now it's rearranged to the way I had it before with the various uh, favorites checked and only the ones that I checked from before. So it's really a great, it's really a feature I need to start using more myself uh, because when I'm doing, say, my uh, real estate photography, I actually use, you know, all of the tools here in the uh, geometry section that I, that I never use for like birds in flight. So you can set up as many different types of workspaces that suit the kind of photography that you might be doing that day, or you might be doing all the time, then you'd only need to set up one, but uh, it's, it's really a really powerful feature. So that's all I have for today, but I will be making more videos and tutorials for Photolab 6 and the other DxO products. And I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below. They are greatly appreciated, but thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.